Ha <laughs> how's it going everybody? It's me, British Lad Waddles, and welcome to part four of the Wilder Wildest Showcase. Oh, it's a big one. It's gonna be a really big one. From an amazingly squishy new Minecraft mob to the chef's kiss of chef's kissy this cave biomes, I've got lots to show you. Leave a like for more Wilder Wild, subscribe for more juicy videos, and as always, huge thank you to the devs of this mod for that tasty, tasty. early access. Because of that amazing early access, truly, you won't see this stuff anywhere else, except the last episode. So in the last episode, we talked all about the birch revamp of our dreams. Today, we have a little catching up to do. I kind of forgot something. This little thing right here. I'm sorry, guys. I, I must have just ended up getting distracted by the amazing lure of all of the other really cool flowers that this pack adds. So these small white flowers are known as seeding dandelion. Placed next to a normal dandelion, you could definitely see why. I mean, there's a pretty similar vibe. Inside of the crafting table, the seeding dandelion, what does it do? Well, nothing. The real secret that this flower holds gets exposed as soon as we place it down on the ground. So once I place a bunch of these things, pay attention to what happens here. It's subtle, but immediately this area feels like way more cozy, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. It's 100% because of the particle effects. You take the spore blossom, you flip it upside down so it's like facing right side up, and then you put it on the ground and boom, boom. you end up with a seeding dandelion. The seeding dandelion releases these white particle effects into the air in the area around the flower. After seeing this, a light bulb was lit inside of my head. Imagine if every normal flower in the vanilla game did this whole particle effect thing maybe before being pollinated by a bee or shortly after. Like just for a short amount of time. It increases the atmosphere, it looks so good, and... Well, I don't have a third thing to say here, so we'll, we'll just, we'll say it smells good too. All right, get ready to be impressed. You see these amazing glowing blocks right over here, and then these amazing, amazing, colorful glowing item block things uh, over here. Well, uh, these are two of the new things that you're going to be able to find and what we're going to check out next. Based off of most of what we've checked out so far in the Wilder Wild Showcase series, you might think that most of everything that this mod changes is up on the surface. And if you thought that, great news. I'm an emotionally validating king, and I'm here to validate your feelings. I mean, I get it. From the Cypress wetlands to all the biome upgrades, most of the stuff is on the surface. Until now. Picture this, you find yourself wandering through a cave, running low on supplies, searching desperately for the exit of that cave. And then all of a sudden, you stumble upon a big chamber, and this chamber has something strange and different that you've never seen before. You decide to move into the chamber and start walking around. Immediately, you see the water is icy, cold, and again, the weird things all over the wall, they almost have like a, a strange glow to them. You keep moving through and you hear strange, uh, yet interesting, echoey ambient noises, until... Well, until that chamber opens up into something a little bit bigger, and all over the ceiling, all over the ground, all over the place inside of this thing, all over the place, you've got glowing blocks and actually quicksand too. Hey, 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 and creepers, and, and you got creepers too. Friends, I would like to present you the brand new beautiful Jellyfish Caves biome. Now this one that I found right here is like pretty much perfect. It's got that big open cavern, it's got all of the blocks here. And the atmosphere. I never know if it actually translates into video, but like checking this thing out in game, it feels so cool. It's like kind of cold feeling, but at the same time, like welcoming with all these glowing things. Now, good news, this place is really cool. The unfortunate news, if you download the mod and you try and check it out for yourself, well, I've got that early access exclusive look. It's not gonna be here quite yet. But when it does get here, you can expect it to look a little bit something like this. So first things first, we've got these glowing plant looking things all over the place. We'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute. Alongside those glowing plant looking things, we've got very similar glowing block looking things. We'll also talk more about those in a second. Giving ourselves a little bit of night vision so we can now reveal all of the secrets of this biome. If it wasn't obvious enough, check it out. All over the ground, we've got water. The water is kind of reminiscent of what you have in the lush caves biome, except it's like way more. Turning our focus from the ground up to the walls, we've got uh, <laughs> we've got one of the most beautiful blocks in the entire game here too, calcite. You looking for calcite for your big giant coliseum build? You looking for calcite for your gigantic goat mounted sculpture? <laughs> well, this biome has you. The biome definitely has you. You're gonna find it generating in chunks, patches, blotches all over the wall. I've done a little bit of testing, uh, and obviously, as you can see here, when it comes to hostile mobs, the biome seems to have normal properties. I'm finding all the normal baddies inside of this biome, like that creeper. You look great. 
Passive mobs, well, at least from what I've seen, we've got two. First things first, this thing. It reeks, it stinks as always, you know, glow squid. And then, let's go ahead and remove this night vision, because look at this thing right there, it glows. It's actually so much easier to see without the night vision. The jellyfish, look at this, right here is chef's kiss, chef's kiss, chef's kiss, the particles all over the place. Oh, I, I love it, this thing is so, so cool. There are so many cool things inside of this biome, I, I almost don't know where to start. But, jellyfish. I'm sorry about this. So you find this biome in your survival world. The first thing that you should probably do is take a look at the jellyfish, because they're going to be kind of the secret to all of the blocks here. So we find the jellyfish, and then we go ahead and take a jellyfish out. They don't have very much health, and then sometimes you get nothing, but other times, you're actually going to get... Oh man, nothing again. For science, really sorry about this. You take it out, and then sometimes you get this pearlescent nematocyst. Blue pearlescent nematocyst. But violence is definitely not always the answer. Maybe sometimes it is, but not always. What you could also do is walk up to the jellyfish with a bucket and pick the thing up. You put it inside of your bucket, then it's kind of in like item form, similar to what the axolotl inside of the bucket is. Then whenever you want, you can walk over to maybe a different body of water and drop the jellyfish back down. Now you're gonna need water in the bucket first, and also the jellyfish being a water mob, it's probably a lot better to drop this thing into like the water, you know, so it actually survives. But if you're a monster, I... I mean, I, I guess you don't have to. Let's talk a little bit more about this nematocyst, though, because check this out. We place it down. It kind of reminds me of that amethyst cluster stuff going on. You know, when you find the geode and you're growing the amethyst for some kind of farm or whatever you're doing, growing the amethyst. Yeah, that's the vibe that it gives off. Now, this stuff is kind of tricky. You find this biome, you're super excited, you just want to bring this stuff home. Your first move might be, like, go over to the stuff and break it and pick it up. If you do that, unfortunately, nothing uh, other than disappointment. Instead, if you want to bring this stuff home, you're going to need something like this thing right here. Silk Touch Pickaxe, or just Silk Touch in general. If I walk up to this thing with shears, nope, still nothing. But if I walk up to this thing with Silk Touch and hit it, then there we go. We actually get the item. Now, we're going to want to keep this item on us because it's actually super useful. But for now, we'll just keep that in mind. So the jellyfish are really, really cool. You take them out, you get the nematocyst, or you put them inside of a bucket and maybe move them back over your base. Now, from what I've seen so far inside of this biome, when the jellyfish spawns, it always seems to look like this. But there's more. Oh, there's more. There's definitely more. So check this thing out. Lime jellyfish right there. We've got a red one right there. There's a yellow one as well. That's a pink one right there. Another lime. If you use the jellyfish spawn egg, you're just going to get a bunch of different jellyfish. Look at the yellow one. I think the yellow one is my favorite. I mean, I mean I'm biased. Yellow is always my favorite color. With all these jellyfish over here, it's looking like the warm ocean or something. There's so many colors. Now keep in mind that the jellyfish, they're definitely still a work in progress feature, so they might end up changing by the time they actually make it in the release of the mod, but like, these things are so excited to just like simply exist, or at least I think that's what's going on. Uh, they're so excited to exist that they're jumping, and now they're singing, and uh, oh, they're, they're evolving, or, um, well, now I have a bunch of nematocysts. I'm gonna go ahead and say that is not my bad at all. I just didn't realize, but this nematocyst is actually kind of the perfect segue into our next thing that we need to talk about. These blocks over here. So check these things out. As you just saw a second ago, the nematocyst is useful for crafting. We place this in the crafting table, two by two grid like that. Then we get the meso... Mesogella. Mesoglea. Misogelia. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that one. We get this block right here. Now, it's very squishy sounding, and walking on it, it's like slippery and squishy as well. When it comes to the nematocyst, we've got seven different colors right now. These are the colors right there. When it comes to the mesoglium, we also have seven different colors. These are the colors that we're looking at right here. Now, two of these colors, these two that we're looking at right here, are going to be labeled as pearlescent, and then the other ones, they're not labeled as pearlescent. Aside from maybe being able to be found and naturally generating inside of the caves, I'm not too sure what the difference is between pearlescent and non-pearlescent. I mean, of course we have this color difference thing going on, but like light level wise, everything else wise, it seems to be basically the same thing. So check this stuff out. We place it down all over the ground right here, and then we can go ahead and waterlock this stuff. If we place water on it, the texture changes. That's really, really cool. When you find this stuff generating inside of the caves, sometimes it'll be waterlogged. When the stuff is waterlogged, watch what happens. Uh, so not waterlogged, we can go ahead and jump on top of it. Is waterlogged, we move into it, and, and well, that's the thing. <laughs> we actually move right into it. Now, because of this property, when I was walking around inside of the caves, I actually kind of slipped into it, almost like quicksand. 
Now, it's not really dangerous because, as you can see, not very short at all, but still, interesting. As far as I found from all of my testing, every single color of this stuff can be waterlogged as well and changes the texture, like, quite noticeably. I like the new textures. I also love that they're kind of transparent here. You could definitely use this in, like, a colorful themed build. This maybe like a window or something. So you know what they say, sometimes it's the middle of the day, until all of a sudden it's not the middle of the day. But you wouldn't be able to tell over here because of all the light going on. The Mesoglea, Mesogella, the, the M stuff, it actually gives off light. Now, it doesn't give off a lot of light. For reference over here, we've got Glowstone giving off a light level of 14, and the Torch over here, same thing, 14. Instead of 14, the Mesoglea, every single color of it, seems to give off a light level of 6 every single time. But well, light, light is light. light. Since the mob spawning change at 1.18, we don't judge. Moving back down into the jellyfish caves, the nematocysts all over the wall, plus these blocks all over the place, it's creating this subtle ambient glow. I love it. Showing off that cool waterlogged quicksand-like property one more time for you here, watch this. We go ahead and walk over here, and then we sink right down into the stuff, and then kind of start like falling down the, the hill, the, the side of the cliff, or the, the side of the cave, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I don't know. I just think it's so cool. Imagine that the slime block, maybe the honey block, was able to be waterlogged like this and behaved like it too. That'd be so cool. So the jellyfish game biome, what do you think? What are your thoughts on it? Let me know down below. Next up, I'd like to show you something really, really cool that I found when I was messing around with the jellyfish cave biome. We're gonna make a single biome world and make it all the jellyfish cave. Go ahead and let this thing load up really quick and right away from the start, oh, it's water. Oh, you definitely can't deny it's water all over the place. And now, obviously, this is like some really strange generation. You would never see this, but I thought it was interesting to say the least. So all over the place, we've got Mesoglea again, waterlogged all over the surface. It's pretty cool, but it gets even more cool. If we move out of the ground, we've got normal caves twisting and turning all over the place, except this time, Nematocyst is in every single cave. With the Nematocyst all over the place, it creates this really interesting, subtle glow. I love it. Moving around a little bit throughout this world, there's jellyfish caves and jellyfish caves and even more jellyfish caves. It looks so good. One of my favorite things, though, is when the caverns start to get a little bit bigger and more open. When they start to get bigger and more open, of course, you've got the glowing all over the place, dotting the walls. It looks really good, but you also get the black actually starting to form these, like, drips going on. I mean, look at this stuff right here. It's, like, sinking or dripping slowly. And speaking of dripping, the particle effect that comes off of the bottom of this block... <laughs> it's literally dripping. Yeah, it's safe to say, one of my favorite things about this entire mod pack is the attention to detail. The things that are added are unique, but also unique in a vanilla way, if that makes sense. It, it's something that's different, but could definitely be done in the vanilla game. Like, I could totally see a block like this being added, and then a particle effect like that being added too. I mean, the circles are kind of illegal, but like, <laughs> it's so good. Now, next up, I'm going to show you something a little bit secret and a little bit more mysterious. Between us, uh, you got to keep it between us, all right? When I was moving around here in my normal, non-single biome war, looking at the jellyfish cave and everything like that, I found something intriguing, to say the least. So, if we go ahead and move into the walls of this cave right here, you find a structure. And the structure, it's weird. It's strange. Giving ourselves a little bit more light so we can see what's going on here. We've got a stone chest over there. We've got barrels. We've got a bed. and We've got candles all over the place. This place is technically still inside of the jellyfish caves. It's sort of like an outpost. Somebody was here exploring at one point. Inside of the barrels, we've got a little bit of loot, but not too much. And then inside of the stone chest, we go ahead and open this thing slowly. We do have even more loot. Now remember, this chest, it slammed shut after a while, so you gotta be quick. But it's interesting. Who was here? And what is this? With a stone chest, is this thing maybe ancient? Or or am I walking in on something that somebody is gonna be right back over to? And so many questions, and today, no answers. Hate to do it to you, but I'm gonna do it to you. If you wanna know more about that structure, and maybe even a little bit more about the jellyfish, and even the deep dark biome, and the changes that have happened there, Leave a like on this episode, and I'll make a part five. I would love to. Instead of ending with a mysterious question today, though, I'm gonna end with one more thing that I missed in the last episode. It has to do with the shell fungus that you'll find growing on trees. 
look and no clue how I completely missed this one, but it's kind of a crime. So we have the red shelf fungus. We place it under the side of the thing. This is just a little bit. We place it again, and there's a little bit more. We place it again, and there's a little bit more. And then one more time, we place it again, and boom, there's so much. Look at that. So we've got four different stages or, um, like, clusters of this stuff. We've got a little bit. We've got a little bit more, a little bit more, and then finally, a little bit more. Now, these clusters are going to work on every single face, too. So a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and a lot of it right there. Look at that. It clusters. I think I definitely saw at least a comment or two in the last episode about this stuff and how it would be cool if you could place it in clusters and uh, uh well I don't know if it was a reminder that I completely missed it or if it was just an interesting thought but yeah you totally can and just in case you were curious if this stuff isn't a bigger cluster and you break the stuff you will get more than one of these things so that was four right there and I actually ended with four same thing right over here that's four four turns into four kind of cool Anyways, that's gonna do it for today. The Jellyfish Caves biome and the Jellyfish. If I missed anything major, I'll let you know in the next episode. Huge thank you to you for watching this video, especially if you made it to this one. You're my best friend. And a big, big thank you to the devs of this mod for, again, that tasty, juicy early access. These videos wouldn't be possible without them. Now, finally today, I'd like to showcase this beautiful build that uses hollowed logs. It's by Zero Zombie 12 and I mean, look at this thing. I need this monster in my world, like right now. Mod link is down in the description. Check it out. The mod is kind of blowing up at this point. Definitely add it to your survival experience because it fits in so well. Anyway, this has been me, Waddles. I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.